Hey guys, just realized I should have worn my Pure Scholar shirt for this one. Dang. Uh, oh well, maybe I'll get you in the reflect phase with the Pure Scholar shirt. A um, couple of videos as part of your instructions here, and I'd really like you to watch each one of these because I really want you all to be kind of thinking about things in the same way as we do this Pure Scholar activity. So this first one, I just want to introduce you to this and kind of connect it with other things that we have going on in the class. Um, and so it's going to be a little more general, a little further down. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about giving feedback specifically. And then a little further down from there, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the self-assessment you'll do as part of this. So a little micro learning as we go. So let's, let's just start with this one. And again, this is really just to kind of give you um, the big picture of why I'm asking you to do what I'm about to ask you to do. Um, so first of all, you know, usually when you do assignments in, in university or in school, you've worked hard on something, you submit it, it disappears. Eventually it comes back with teacher comments and a grade. And, and you know, the research suggests that often you don't even read those comments in any detail. Um, in Peer Scholar, we're going to really try to change that process. Process. So you have submitted something. That was the first step, right? And what you submitted was a draft. And that's really what we want you to think of it as. This is about, from here on in, it's going to be about learning how you can make your draft even better before the TAs grade it for quality. So as far as your draft, they're really just going to grade whether you seem to have put effort into producing that first draft. Um, and now you're going to go through two learning experiences. They're not just going to be things that will help you learn. They're also things designed to exercise skills, um, critical thinking, creative thinking, your communication skills, both expressing your own opinion, but also shutting up and listening to what other people are saying uh, and your ability to work in a collaborative environment like this. So Peer Scholar was really created to give you what we call repeated structured practice. And I just want to highlight the importance of that for a moment. You can learn information simply by listening. And if it's a great presenter, you can pick up a whole bunch of information. So, so let me say it this way. You could learn a lot about some skill. Let's say hockey. You were interested in hockey. You could learn a lot about hockey in a one hour information session. You could learn the rules of the game. You could learn about the equipment that's used. You could learn a little bit about the history of the game. All of that information you could learn pretty easily. But if you actually wanted to play hockey, if you wanted to pick up the skill of hockey, um, you're not going to do that in a one hour lecture. You're only going to do that by playing hockey. Initially, badly. You know, when you start the, a new skill for the first time, you're sometimes a little awkward and kludgy, but you have to get in the game. You have to start using that skill. And as you do that, and especially if you get repeated practice, especially in a structured environment, that skill is going to slowly get better and better and better. So the skills we're focusing on here are things like critical thinking. Uh, and the goal is to engage you in critical thought, to have you using that skill, okay, and creative thinking and communication, etc. So now with all of this in mind, let me just give you a sense of what's going to happen. Um, you are going to log in and you're going to kind of be put in the teacher role all of a sudden. You're going to see the work that some of your peers submitted. It's going to be anonymously presented. Uh, you won't see their names. I hope, I hope you won't see their names. Um, was I clear with you guys not to put your names on your work? It's not critical, but hopefully it'll be anonymous. Uh, and so you're going to go through peer by peer. You're going to read their work and you're going to answer a few questions. Um, one of those questions will involve you highlighting something they're doing well. And please, you know, really try to find something that you like that they did and highlight that because that's something to tell them, um, you know, I, this is something I should continue to do. Uh, it was a good thing in, in my work. But most critically, we're going to have you giving some, what we're gonna call constructive feedback, some advice to each peer on how their work can be improved. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a lot about that in my feedback video below. Uh, but for now, let me just say, as you go through each piece of work, I'm asking you to think critically about it. How could it be better? What could be fixed? To think creatively about how to fix that and to express that all to the peer 
in a way that they will listen to and learn from. You know, that's your task. And I'm going to ask you to do that for peer one and then peer two and then peer three and then peer four and peer five. So this repeated structured use of these skills, it's like a hockey training camp for your mind. Um, and, and that's the idea in this phase. Now, the last peer will be you. You will see your own work. Uh, and I'm going to ask you some questions about that too. And I'll talk about that in the self-assessment section below. Um, one of the things I want you to realize about this and why we're kind of putting you through this is, you know, so often when you just handed work in and got it back, you had no idea what kind of work your classmates were doing. And therefore you had no idea where your work sat, you know, was it better than your classmates work? All you know is the grade you got and the grade they got. Well, in Peer Scholar, you're actually going to see the work that your peers have done, some of them. Uh, and some of those peers will be doing better than you, some not so good. So you're going to naturally kind of see, you know, you're going to see some that are doing better and, and potentially learn from them uh, and some that aren't doing so good. And that's the real idea here. So I want you to spend some time, you know, doing that as you go through thinking about each peer's work in relation to your own and getting a better sense of your own work. The self-assessment will really kind of highlight that. We'll try to focus on that there, but that's another part of this whole experience. Okay, so that's the big idea. We're asking you to do this because you're exercising all these core skills. They are now being called the transversal skills. These are the skills that will help you be successful in, in your job setting, but also, you know, just to give you a taste, good critical thinking means maybe you pick the right life partner. How important a decision is that for your life? Good critical thought helps you all through your life, career, and, and, and non-career parts. Uh, and so that's the real goal here is, is to get you working on these skills. It's going to be kind of weird at first, a little difficult uh, as you go through, um, but just, just do it. Exercise. Just like you're playing hockey for the first time and feeling a little awkward. You know, that's how it is with skills when you're, when you're first really using them in a structured way. Uh, but that's the idea here. Okay. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learn a lot. And um, yeah, continue reading through the instructions and I will see you in the next video. Okay.